Hello, Woodmont Student Ministry. Um, I hope you're doing well. I want to take just a couple minutes um, and say thank you so much for your responses to the student ministry survey that we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, I also want to take a couple minutes here to um, tell you a little bit about what's next um, and to maybe explain why we uh, continue to be closed at this point, but to hopefully give you some insight into what you can expect in the coming weeks. Uh, I have my computer right below me because I want to make sure that I'm getting this right um, because your, your feedback and the, the answers that you provided are so valuable to us. Um, so thank you again for that. Um, I want to share a couple things that you guys shared and that came up multiple times. Um, some of the concerns that you guys had uh, as parents um, and some of the things that you're grateful for um, during this time. Uh, many of you shared that you were worried about your student and you're worried about what quarantine is doing to their mental health. Um, so many of you shared how important student ministry uh, and the church as, uh, as a whole, how important that community is to your student and to your family's faith. Um, so many of you shared sadness um, for missing so many of our summer events and the mountaintop faith moments that come with it. Um, so many of you also shared a strong desire to go back to in-person events. The overwhelming majority of you really, really want to go back. Um, so I want you to hear me say that I hear you. And again, thank you so much um, for your feedback. I'm taking your feedback uh, along with my personal convictions uh, and with the recommendations of our church leadership team to figure out what is best moving forward for student ministry. And I want to share a little bit about that with you now. Um, we're going to begin planning and moving forward um, with events that allow us to meet in person. This isn't going to happen right away. Uh, we're still probably a couple weeks away from them actually um, taking place, the events actually taking a place. But I want to give you a heads up uh, that those events are going to look different. Uh, we'll have to adapt to what kind of events that we can do um, and how we are doing them. Um, I'll go ahead and give you a heads up that we're going to require things like masks, temperature checks, and social distancing for your student to be able to attend the event. Um, and I'll tell you why we're doing that in just a moment, but I want to give you a heads up about that. Um, one of the other things that came through in our survey is about a third of you, just under a third of you, said that you live with someone or you yourself are considered high risk uh, by the CDC if you were to contract coronavirus. So we're gonna take steps in these events where we're meeting in person to keep everyone safe. Um, there's no guarantee that we can do that, um, but there are some very easy, tangible things that we can do to keep each other safe and to keep each of our students safe. Um, so what does that decision-making process look like? What does the decision-making process look like for us going back and having events look like? Um, well, I'm not the only one making these decisions for student ministry. Um, I have been asked to follow along with the whole church uh, and what the whole church is doing with regards to opening and closing. Um, the church has created a coronavirus task force that includes um, some of our shepherds, some of our ministers, but um, maybe even more importantly than that, um, some doctors and nurses and some people who work in the healthcare industry. Um, and they are the ones who are making the recommendations to us as a ministry staff and our shepherds about if we should remain open or closed. And they have asked us any events that we do to run them through them. And they will give us feedback on if it's a good idea, if it's a bad idea, if there's some easy things we can do to make those events more safe. And right now, uh, that task force is recommending that we do not have large in-person gatherings. Uh, but that does leave a little bit of wiggle room for us to do small and in-person uh, gatherings. So as we move forward with having smaller events, I'll be running my student ministry plans through the coronavirus task force and our shepherds um, for their approval and feedback. So I anticipate us being able to have small in-person outdoor events, hopefully in the next two to three weeks, uh, pending approval from the task force and our shepherds. It's not a promise. Uh, it's just my gut feeling and what I hope will happen. Uh, my personal leaning um, and, and why we have closed and why we've stayed closed from my point of view um, is if some of you, uh, those of you who have been through the sixth grade promotion class that I've done with, with Julie Tooley the last couple years, um, one of the things that I tell you up front is my uh, top priority when it comes to your student is their safety. Uh, because if we can't keep them safe, we can't form their faith. We can't give them a safe community to belong to if they don't feel safe. Um, there, there's no way that we can guarantee safety, but we can get pretty close to it. Um, and right now, I don't feel like I can guarantee or come close to guaranteeing the safety of your student at events, which is why we've stayed close, uh, or why my recommendation to our decision-making teams have been to stay close. I have a responsibility um, to the whole ministry to make decisions for what is best for everyone. And I understand that um, for so many of you, um, the, the thing that is best for your family would be for us to be in person having events. And I'm sorry that we're not doing that. I'm, I'm sorry that what is best for your family is not happening. 
Um, but we have to make decisions for the whole ministry, um, for, for all of the families um, involved in student ministry. Um, over and over in scripture, we are told to care for the most vulnerable among us. We're told to love our neighbor. Uh, we're told to care for the person who is sick among us and in our, in our communities. And right now, the way that we're doing that, the way that we're caring for the most vulnerable among us is by staying closed. It seems counterintuitive, um, but it, it's what we're doing. And when we get back in person, the way that we are going to love the most vulnerable among us uh, is going to be by wearing masks and by doing temperature checks and social distancing and a couple other precautions um, that, that we'll share with you soon. But one of the concerns that came through in a big way in the survey um, was so many of you sharing that you're concerned about the mental health of your student. Um, I, b I believe one person shared something like, um, you are more concerned about the effects that quarantine has had on your student's mental health then you would be concerned about the effects that coronavirus would have within your family if someone contracted it. And that breaks my heart. Um, and I've been wrestling with what to do with some of that feedback as it's been coming in. Um, and, and the shift that is happening within me um, is I have gone from thinking that uh, the person who is most vulnerable is the person with the virus or underlying health conditions um, involved in our ministry. Um, and, and I still think that that is true. Um, but, but maybe another uh, vulnerable group is so many of your students who you shared that you were watching their mental health deteriorate. Um, and I'm wondering and I'm asking what our role in that is. Um, what is student ministry's responsibility um, as we go into that? So with, with that in mind, um, we're moving forward um, with trying to figure out what meeting in small groups will look like. And I'm hoping uh, that those events will take place in about two to three weeks. Again, it's not a promise, um, but it's what I'm shooting for. Um, and as we begin to make plans, I will run them through the appropriate uh, decision-making groups um, to get their feedback and approval before those events were to actually take place. So what's next? Again, we're going to start planning events that will hopefully start and take place in about two to three weeks. And we're running those events through the appropriate channels. I will say I am watching cases go up um, in the whole country and in uh, Tennessee and in Nashville. And I'm keeping an eye on that. That makes me a little nervous. Um, not making decisions based out of fear, uh, but need to do what's best for our ministry. Um, and so while we are moving forward um, with, with hoping to have events in the next two to three weeks, I do want to keep that asterisk there. And so I'm watching uh, cases go up that will inform these decisions. And I hope that you know we are still active as a church. Um, I, I would love to see your student on the um, Sunday morning um, church worship gatherings that we have every Sunday morning. They've been amazing. I love seeing so many of your students on our Tuesday and Thursday middle school and high school Zoom check-in calls where we just try to have fun with each other. And I love seeing your students on the Wednesday night Bible studies that we've been doing as we've been working through the Sermon on the Mount. So if you're not involved with that, please get involved with that. We would love to see your student there. Um, we'll keep you updated right here in the newsletter uh, as we have more to share and have more official tangible information. But I did want to give you just a heads up about where we're going and say thank you for filling out the survey. Uh, I hope you know that we love you. We love your family. Um, and we've been praying for you every single day um, as you've been going through this quarantine together. And I can't wait to be back together in person.